If you're a fan of the behind the scenes stuff that happens for the development of games, and in particular with what we're talking about, Call of Duty, the last couple of days have actually been pretty good and seem to be pretty good as we'll get more stuff coming out in the next couple of days. We've gotten a couple of behind the scenes videos already for Modern Warfare from the campaign side to the multiplayer and a little bit of the campaign side a little bit further in another video. And we learned today that we'll be getting more over the next couple of days. So it's cool to get these little in-depth looks at the behind the scenes stuff, how things are made and so on and so forth. But out of these videos, we end up getting a couple of sneak peeks and looks at things that we didn't necessarily have and can give us an accurate representation of what's to come. So today I want to talk to you guys about some information relating to weapon camos, different loadout features that we now know exist, the upcoming operation equivalent called Seasons in Modern Warfare, the operator customization, the armory, and so much more. Today we're going to break down all of that from what we learned from a recent interview with Joel Emsley and The Hollywood Reporter, and then we're going to discuss something that is a little concerning towards the end of the video. That said, let's jump into it because there's a lot to talk about. So the big bulk of what we'll end up talking about in this video comes from an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. There was another behind the scenes one that focused on campaign, mostly on the official Call of Duty channel, which I'll leave the link down there in the description below to both these if you guys want to check them out. But with this, we end up getting a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff again at some of what looks to be almost the final build. I don't want to say it is the final build because this stuff was recorded a couple of weeks ago at this point. So Infinity Ward will, of course, be taking beta feedback, making adjustments and all things. And then probably in the next week or two, the game will be certified gold and it'll be sent out to press to disc. And then, of course, out to different platforms for approval so that it can get ready for the full launch in what is now one month's time. So that said, not everything here is final, but it's a very good indication at the final build because not much more will be added in at this point. But along with some of the cool origin features and pieces we get to see, like sketches of the original operator selection menu, the juggernaut sequence, we also end up getting in-depth looks at things. We end up seeing at a broad perspective some of the previews for some weapon camos, actually, what looks like a fall camo on the M4 and a sort of urban woodland camo on the MP5. Now, this would go with everything that we know in terms of camos that are realistic, but we don't know exactly in what capacity that will be, whether that's headshots or something like that, whether that is something for a different mastery effect. We don't know. We don't know what the highest sort of camo is, but it's a good indication as to what at least the base camos will look like within the game. Realistic and very similar in some cases to what we've seen in the past. Going a little more in depth, though, we start to see that we now have in the weapon menu a couple of more options to play around with as well, with that little broad perspective of the weapon menu, including edit loadouts, kill streak select and field upgrades which we saw in the beta but we also end up seeing underneath that two new selections called watch select and armory now i'll break all these down but to start out from the top down we end up seeing in the edit loadout section there's actually a couple of more features that we didn't have in the beta of those, we end up seeing that we actually have a couple of new perks that were showcased in this. You can barely make them out, but they're ones that we know of and of course now are confirmed within this build. Such things including the quick fix perk, point guard, which turns your kill streaks into point streaks, and then tracker as a perk as well. We also end up seeing that there is another feature right next to the gunsmith icon whenever you hover over a weapon selection. You end up seeing that you have the customize option next to that gunsmith, which the icon for that is an eye, which will detail that is the customization that we get to see as the player. My guess is this is where you'll end up seeing your camos housed, perhaps where you can select your blueprints for weapons to create a variant of that weapon or other things like also weapon charms and things alike that you'll end up seeing on that first person perspective on your weapon. But that's added in and we get to see a little bit more of what that will look like come the full launch of the game. And then you also end up seeing what I think is probably one of the coolest things here out of this is jumping back to the perks, the ability to activate specialist, which you're going to be able to do this just based off of your perk selection menu. You don't have to go into your kill streaks or anything like that, but it seemingly will override the kill streaks you have selected whenever using the class setup. So for this, of course, Specialist, if you haven't played in the past, is one of those things where you can end up picking a couple of perks and then afterwards you end up getting a Specialist bonus. So perks are awarded at 2, 4, and 6 kills, or if you have Hardline, 1, 3, and 5, and then the bonus at 7 or 8, depending again on your perk loadout, to which if you get that Specialist bonus, you get every perk in the game, save for Overkill. That's obviously something that players have loved in the past and is an absolute awesome addition to see coming back to the game. We saw this last in Call of Duty Ghosts, so it's been quite a 
bit of time since this has made its return, and I'm super excited to jump in with this. After the edit loadout section, of course, we know that kill streaks are all the same. We know that the field upgrades are all the same, save for a couple of things that will probably be added in for each of those come launch. We didn't get any more in-depth looks at them, though, within this video from the Hollywood Reporter. But we ended up seeing that, of course, we have the options of watch select and armory. So for watch select, this is where I would imagine you'd be able to pick up and choose whatever watch you have on your soldier. The watches in this game feature the real time on your console. So if you're playing in the accurate time zone on said console, it'll show you that time right there in game. This feature was built out and expanded upon in the way that you have a Tamagunchi, if you remember correctly. This will allow you to have a toy companion on your watch that is sort of comedic relief the way I take it. It'll cheer you on if you do well, have some angry faces if you're not, and everything in between. It's honestly a stupid but also fun little piece of extra customization that if you don't like it, you don't have to engage with it. It's just kind of there as an extra little for fun thing added in. So that's probably where you're going to end up seeing some of the customization for your watch faces, your Tamagunchi as well to choose which one you want there. But then as for the armory, this to me I think is presumably where we'll see the unlockable progression or housing for all weapon schematics you have, assuming that there are some organically unlocked, some that may be in supply drops, but I'm not expecting the armory to the level of detail like Advanced Warfare, but I'm partially imagining this being similar to the armory that we had in Infinite Warfare, where you can see the available variants and schematics, and assuming that that's the case, you'll also probably have the option to end up buying them with in-game currency that you earn, or well, hopefully earn, if there even is something, which we'll come back to in a second. Then we end up seeing that we had some information on calling cards shown off. We got a look at a brand new one here, what may be a mastery calling card, though. Maybe not, given that the alpha, we had tons of animated calling cards to begin with for default levels. So maybe it's another default calling card. Maybe it's a mastery. We don't know, but we saw a little sneak peek at that. We also saw a little bit of the operator customization as well, where you had the ability to see, firstly, a couple of new operators, but also you saw some of the animations that you had with this that came along with it. I don't know if this is necessarily just a little bit of a selection emote or if it's something that is actually an emote in game. We saw that there was one that was a little crazy out there, kind of silly. We also saw that we have the option to edit the skin of said operator with the triangle button on PlayStation 4, and that's presumably then the Y button on of Xbox One and whatever you have it bound to on PC also. We see a couple of the skins that are going to be available and we also end up seeing that there's denoted rarity to it, which is very similar to that of Infinite Warfare's icons denoting levels and rarity and how they even have it laid out. Whether or not this is still just a temporary thing, we don't know. We have seen some crossover in terms of smaller icons like that in the past, but we don't know if that's going to be the full on build of that. But they also end up showcasing a little bit of what are going to be seasons with Within Modern Warfare, which is presumably the operation equivalent here for Modern Warfare, where we had six of these within Black Ops 4. The number is nowhere to be found just yet in Modern Warfare, but we end up seeing that there was one that is entitled Homegrown Terrorism Season, which I gotta say is an interesting pick for an operation or a season in a game for that title, but Regardless, you see that it's a base uniform here with this, a default variation of it. So it could be something that is just there for playing the game, just taking part. But it also showcases a little bit of the future that we can expect more seasons to be coming later on through the year. There also is a little bit of a hint at execution customization where we see a little bit of that menu as well up in the upper left. It's the option to the right of your skins that you have for your operator. So you'll be able to see more executions available than that of just the defaults that we've seen per each operator, some of which were showcased in the beta and alpha, but we'll have more and that's probably going to be a DLC thing coming later on down the line. And this is unfortunately where we transition the talk to be something more so of talking about, oh, that's pretty cool. We learned some more stuff about the game to some probably not so pleasant talks. It's definitely stuff that I don't like talking about, but that being the microtransactions, because as what leaks indicated beforehand, we're going to have a decent system in place, something that would have salvage or an equivalent of salvage and earnable in-game currency like that. You'd end up seeing only things in supply drops being cosmetic only, but apparently the winds are changing in the background behind the scenes against developer will. And this is something that was reported recently to say there's now going to be a lot of that cool stuff in drops. Not just cosmetic stupid stuff that will fill out things like that, but are also still kind of cool, like blueprints, wristwatches, uniforms, executions, but maybe even to the point of full-blown weaponry. And that is not something that I am looking forward to, and I'm hoping this is something that if we talk about it enough that we say, hey, you know what? 
what we have already is pretty dope. That stuff in terms of blueprints, that's fine in supply drops. Wristwatches, fine in supply drops. Uniforms, fine in supply drops. But put weapons in there and that's where you start to have the problem. And so hopefully this gets changed at this point, I don't know. I mean, I was expecting something like this to happen probably later on down the line, but not come for launch, not for the first major content drop or something that is introduced for the air quote supply drop loot system. I'm a little scared now. And I really think that looking at Modern Warfare, what Infinity Ward has developed, untouched from everything that we're now seeing start to come to the forefront from the business decisions, like that one year exclusivity for survival, like these things that may change in the MTX pipeline, this can honestly really hurt a game that I think is probably the best base game that we've seen in years. I've seen so many of my friends come back to this game and say, you know what, Modern Warfare kind of reminds me of the old days. It's got a little bit of a new twist to it, but I'm really enjoying Call of Duty again. Now, for the diehards like you and I, that's something that obviously we're going to probably play. But for people that are coming back to it, that means something special with this game. And I sure hope that that doesn't get screwed over by some stupid business decision, something that could truly ruin a great experience and just warp it and make it something less enjoyable. So I guess we'll see in time with that part, but that's everything we learned today out of these couple of behind the scenes thing. And I want to share it with you guys because I am looking forward to seeing what else is coming to the table for the launch. Afterwards, that's when we start to get into the worrisome territory. I really hope that this doesn't go by the wayside and down the slippery slope that Black Ops 4 did, but only time will tell with that. So that said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there anything in particular that you guys really liked here out of this? Any of the new features we covered? Did you guys really enjoy it? Maybe not so much. Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you aren't new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Modern Warfare. Updates, news, information, tips, tricks, leaks, all that good stuff. We got you covered. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. Frankly, live on both those. So if you guys want to share up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But all of a sudden, out of the way, thank you guys all so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.